Unlike your car, your body doesn't just run on one source of fuel. Depending on what you're doing and how long you're doing it, your body will dip into different energy systems to power you through your workout. Hello and welcome to episode two of the Science of Performance. I'm your host, Sean Russell. Today I'm joined by international fitness consultant Joe Arco and Dylan Thomas. Later in the show, we'll be going to the Gold Ring Center for High Performance Sport at the University of Toronto, where the new Iovate Metabolism and Sports Science Lab is located, to break down these different energy systems and how they apply to you. But first, I'd like to welcome Joe to our show. Hey, Joe. How you doing, Sean? Really good. Glad to have you. Pleasure to be here. So what the heck is an energy system? When we say energy systems, we're talking about how the body generates energy to spark muscle contractions. While all activities tap into the same energy systems during exercise, some activities use one energy system more heavily than others. Can you give us a brief breakdown of each of these systems? For sure. Let's take a look at the fossil creatine system. It will be the dominant energy system during maximum intensity training, lasting about 10 seconds. Last 10 seconds? That doesn't exactly give somebody bragging rights. No, it doesn't. From there, the body shifts to the anaerobic glycolysis, which is the main energy system fueling moderate to high intensity exercise, or about 60 to 100% of your maximum that lasts about two minutes. In both these systems, your body uses ADP, or adenosine diphosphate, and converts it to ATP, adenosine triphosphate, basically the currency of energy. Have you ever heard of lactic acid? No, that's not the stuff they take out of milk, right? That's lactose. The anaerobic glycolytic system has a downside. A byproduct called lactate is created. Though technically lactate can be used by other tissues such as the heart as fuel, it is associated with a hydrogen ion that can make your muscles more acidic and lead to muscle fatigue and soreness. Oh, okay, so are there any more systems? We got one more, the aerobic system. It's the system in which you rely on oxygen and it's the one your body uses the most. This system excels during activity of lighter intensity that lasts anywhere from two minutes to hours. So how about we go through some examples of activities? Dylan's gonna do an activity, and you identify what activity he's doing. Sounds good. Okay, so what about this? I think he's supposed to be running the marathon, if you can't tell. That's long distance, so it'd be the aerobic system. And how about now? I think he'd probably keep that up for about two minutes. <laughs> I'm sure he could. I'd put my money on the anaerobic glycolytic system. And now? During the explosive jump portion, I'd say the fossil creatine system since it's so high intensity. Okay, so what should the athletes watching take away from all this? Keep in mind that the body will go through many different energy systems during your workout depending on what you're doing. The most important thing is to ensure you're allowing yourself proper recovery. Supplementing with pre-workouts that help regenerate ATP or allow you to push yourself to the max, such as products containing creatine, Elev ATP, or Peak ATP. These ingredients will help you increase performance, strength, and lean muscle. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Dylan. I'd like to thank Joe and Dylan for their help in this episode. Next time on the Science of Performance, we'll take a look at another hot topic, the science of post-workout supplementation. Until next time, I'm Sean Russell. Stay fit and stay focused.